Hello and warm greetings. I'm head president of the English News. The first vice president of Afghanistan, General Abdul Rashid Dostum, says the attack on Intercontinental Hotel revealed security and intelligence failure. In a statement released in the aftermath of the deadly attack, he said that he's deeply saddened with the loss of life and property losses inflicted to the ordinary and innocent civilians. He further added that the attack once again unveils the weakness of the security and intelligence organs to discover and prevent the programs of terror groups. The White House held the Afghan National Defense and Security Forces for their swift action in response to the Taliban attack on Intercontinental Hotel. The White House spokesperson Sara said the U.S. government commenced the swift action of the Afghan forces at the time of the attack. She said Afghanistan forces with our support will continue to relentlessly pursue the enemies of Afghanistan who also seek to export terror around the world. The Taliban militants group claim responsibility behind the coordinated attack on Intercontinental Hotel in Kabul that left dozens of people dead or wounded. Taliban group spokesman Zabiullah Mujahid claimed that scores of people were killed in the attack as he accused the victims of the attacks invaders. However, the Ministry of Interior says at least 18 people were killed and nine others were wounded in the attack and the majority of the victims were ordinary civilians. North Korean ex-spy who blew up Jetler don't trust Kim Jong-un, according to Kim Hyun-ho. Kim Jong's U.S. regime is using the Juming Pyongyang 2018 looming 2018 Olympic to try to separate South Korea from its ally, the United States. South Korea shares a color with a soft voice and a sharp blue suit and not just any color. Kim Hyun Hui is a mass murderer and a former spy for North Korea who blew up a passenger jet in 1987 on orders from Kim Jong Un's father. She says he wanted to sabotage the 1988 Seoul Summer Games as well. And Congress has ended a three day US government shutdown after Republicans and Democrats voted for a temporary funding bill. The Democratic leadership agreed to back the legislation after accepting promises for Republicans for a debate later on the future of young illegal immigrants. House Democratic leader Nancy Pelosi was not giving up. Today, we end the Trump shutdown, but it does not diminish our leverage or our determination on the Democratic side to meet the needs of American people. Democrats are united in their determination to get the job done. The so-called containment resolution keeps the government funded until February 8 in the hope that Congress can eventually reach a longer-term budget agreement. Here's House of Representatives Speaker Paul Lyons said. That is it. Thank you for joining. Take care. Bye.